What is up my dudes, cheap bastard talking to ya, and in today's video I will try to build a professional 4k editing PC on a budget, and to be honest, in this moment of writing I don't really know if this PC even would run 4k, so let's find that out in the process. But before I go over the components and the build, I need to get some 4k 60fps shots first, and for that I'm going to use my daily phone, OnePlus 7 Pro, and my bros One one plus eight. Let's go. Molly rock to my green to my green. Pop up pussy boy, get out my way. Pop up pussy boy, boy, get out my way. Now let's go over the specs I chose for this build and my processor of choice was the Xeon E3 1660v3 which I bought for 115 euros from Aliexpress but what made sense at least in my opinion was the CPU choice. Well first of all this processor has the same specs as the i7 6900k just with a lower clock speed, it supports much cheaper ECC RAM, the upgradability is also really good and the motherboards are reasonably priced. Speaking Speaking of motherboards, I bought this Machinist X99 Indestructible motherboard for 65 euros also from Aliexpress. And to be honest, this has to be one of the best packagings I have ever seen. High quality, indestructible, diamond quality, strong compatibility, eSports helper. I hope I won't get wag banned with this one. <laughs> <laughs> and of course, GGCD, which stands for Yan Ganga College of Technology. Well, everything seems super trustworthy so far. <laughs> Apart from that indestructible part. And since the CPU supports ECC RAM, I bought these two Samsung 16GB 2133 ECC registered DDR4 RAM sticks from a used local marketplace for 50 euros. I also put this regular Samsung 8GB stick in comparison. These ECC ones feel much more beefy. Just look at these massive memory chips, it's like the Chad version of the regular RAM sticks. And after this you're probably like, wow. What the hell is this electronic KitKat? Well, long story short, error correcting RAM are made for servers, which cannot afford to have any errors, so this technology actually reduces performance by 2%. My boot drive of choice was this 250 GB Samsung 840 SSD that I paid 25 V bucks for. When it comes to Samsung SSDs, you really can't go wrong with them. Great performance and reliability. For storage, I chose these two. 2 terabyte hard drives for 25 euros each and specs wise they are nothing too crazy 7200 rpm 64 megabytes of cache but you know for storage that's really more than enough and the power supply that i bought brand new for this build was this ibox cube 2 max 700 watt and i know what you're thinking right now it doesn't have a well-known brand, it lacks 80 plus certification, but you know what, actually I have a lot of experience with this PCU in the past. I honestly had like 50 different 600 watt version PSUs in a ton of my builds and they all performed ideally, even managing to cope with the overclocked i7-2600K and Vega 56 build. It cost me 32 euros brand new and it came with a 2 year warranty, and in my opinion, I think it is a steal at this price point. The Cool that Xeon. I bought this deep cool Gamax 400 tower cooler for 18 euros new because from my experience it has insane price to performance and also a blue LED fan which fits this build steam really well. But what about the GPU I hear you asking? Well, editing doesn't require a lot of GPU performance in most cases. So, my GPU of choice was this MSI Armor RX 574GB that they managed to find used for 75 euros. And to put all of this good stuff in a stylish but not over the top suit, I bought this Gembird or Gembird, really don't know how to pronounce it. 
Gambird. For next 1500B M80X case with three pre-installed blue fans for 25 euros. Although I do have to mention that choosing this case was not the best decision in my life. Later on that in the video. All in all, this PC cost me 445 euros, which makes it more than twice as cheap as the one Linus built. But the question still stands, can it run 4K 60fps editing on Premiere Pro? Let's build this machine and find out. Hello, we are not available now. Please leave your name and phone number after the meeting. We will return your call. In New York, I'm in Leroy. And as you can see in this building edit, I am struggling with the lack of space in this case and no dedicated spot for hard drive installation. So I had to improvise, but the end result seems to be fine. Although I would recommend you choosing one of these cases. To be fair, they are a little bit more expensive, but I had no problem with their build quality. They have a dedicated spot for at least one hard drive, more holes for better cable management, and in some instances, even RGB. Let's go and edit something on Premiere Pro. So, the moment of truth now. Can this 445 euro build edit in 4K? Hey! Yay! So all in all, at standard 4K 60fps real-time video playing in Premiere Pro, it does a great job. No stuttering or lag when playing clips and doing some light work on them, but if you want to go through all of these clips really fast while previewing them, the app starts to stutter a bit and CPU usage maxes out. So full-time 4K 60fps editing is a bit challenging for this PC, but changing the sequence settings to 30fps fixes all of these things and it runs like a charm, no matter what effects or add-ons are being used. Back to the 4K 60fps though, I might need to overclock the CPU a bit, so if you are interested in the results of that, see bastard YT. To conclude, even if I bought every component brand new, this PC would still be a bit cheaper than the one Linus from Linus Tech Tips built. So I challenge them to build their budget editing PC better. We built a PC which is as fast for half the price. And to compare these two PCs, take a look at this graph. Your move, Linus. Subscribe to stop a car crash. And don't forget to stay cheap, my dudes. Cheap bastard out.